The car has become a little bit of a status symbol. Some brands have even become a measure of success where if you're driving them, it means that you've made it in life. And Volkswagen Malaysia, they want to be one of those brands. Now, I personally find that a little bit weird because Volkswagen literally means the people's car. Uh, but, but that's not the point. Besides, they don't plan to accomplish this by selling you golfs and polos. Instead, they want to do it with this bad boy. This is the Volkswagen Arteon R-Line 4Motion and coming in at just over 250,000 ringgit, it's going straight for the BMW 3 Series and Mercedes-Benz C-Class's lunch money. But it's one thing to want to do it and another thing to actually be able to do it. You see, cars at this price point aren't just utilitarian vehicles of labour anymore. They need to be a little special and a big part of that starts with how it drives. The good news is that if it's performance you're looking for, the Arteon R-Line 4Motion has plenty of power. 276 horsepower to be precise. And if you're wondering if that's enough power for a car like this, the answer is yes. Combined with the 7-speed DSG dual-clutch transmission, there's very rarely anything on the road you can't leave behind when you bury your right foot. The power feels like it's always there, even when you're chilling low in the rev range. And that's because according to VW, you get the full grunt of the Arteon's 350 Nm of torque at just 1700 RPM. But if you truly want that instant response, you'll have to switch the gearbox into its manual mode and do the gears yourself with the pedal shifter. Because in anything other than manual, there's always a short delay between when your foot hits the floor and when it gets going. Still, it's easy to just put a bunch of power in a car and make it go really fast in a straight line. What I was perhaps more impressed with was how, even though the Arteon is such a big car, it seems to handle almost like it's on rails. Steering is sharp and responsive, and the car feels planted with plenty of grip to spare, even when I was hitting the corners as hard as I dared. And I think that's mostly down to how the power is being sent to the road. Unlike a comparable BMW or Merc, the Arteon doesn't send its power to just the rear wheels. It uses VW's 4-motion all-wheel drive system that can distribute power to all four wheels when the car needs it to keep it from losing traction. And sure, some might say that that's boring because you know a true driver's car should be rear-wheel drive. But honestly, as someone who has had no professional training, I definitely appreciate that the seemingly inexhaustible amount of grip when I was hooning it through the Mountain Lords. But you shouldn't mistake the Arteon R-Line for a sports car. Despite the low seating position and large 19-inch wheels, I don't get the sense that it was built for the racetrack. I'd say it's more like a GT car, something built to crush long distances in luxurious comfort. And I think for the most part, it does just that. You see, despite feeling so planted on twisty roads, the Arteon is actually very comfortable. On the highway, it's quiet and unflinching, and on uneven B roads, the ride is supple without feeling numb. And the inside, well, it's great. Much like the Tiguan I reviewed last, everything in here feels very well put together. But on the Arteon, it's like they turned the dial up just a tiny bit. The speakers, for example, now come with Harman Kardon audio and a 12-speaker system with a bass box in the boot. Unsurprisingly, it sounds really good for car speakers. 
Phone connectivity also sees the usual suspects of wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, while infotainment is taken care of by a fully digital cluster and center console, both of which have smooth refresh rates and good visibility even under direct sunlight. Mood lighting has also been taken up a notch with even more lights and a color bar to really dial in the color you want. Then there's also the fact that there is so much space in here. I think you'll easily be able to fit four people even if they're on the tall side and you won't have to worry about bumping shoulders in the bends. Oh, and did I mention the fact that you also get a 563 liter boot at the back complete with built-in grocery hooks and mounting points for a luggage net? What about the fact that you can also fold down the rear seats when you want to carry really long stuff? There's even a tiny little hatch in the middle of the seats that you can pop open to quickly grab something from the boot. And if your hands are occupied, you can use the foot sensor to open the boot with a swipe of your foot under the Archeon's bumper. Though you can't do the same motion to close it again, instead you'll have to use the button. So uh, I guess make sure your hands aren't occupied when you need to close it. Then there are the front seats, you know, although they definitely look more sporty than comfortable, they feel plenty comfortable with a lot of adjustability. In fact, the driver's seat even has a basic massage function which I did find handy on long journeys to keep the stiffness in my back at bay. The only downside is that, you know, the combination of a low seating position, a huggy seat and B pillar position means that Getting out of this car isn't really super elegant. But I guess that's the price you have to pay to maintain that low swooping roof line. And honestly, I'm not even mad. Just look at it. The gentle coupe inspired sloping rear, the frameless windows, aggressive grille and this lapis blue colorway. It is a stunner, and I think stunning should be the word you use to describe an aspirational car. But while I think the Arteon is very Volkswagen-y in a way that's good, it's also very Volkswagen-y in a way that is bad. The most obvious of which is in the form of its autonomous safety features. This was a big criticism of mine when I reviewed the Tiguan Allspace R-Line, and it remains to be a pain point in the Arteon R-Line for motion, though I will admit to a lesser degree. That's because this car does include some safety features like blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alerts, and lane keep assistance. But there is still no autonomous emergency braking. Why? This car has freaking lane keep assist, okay? That will actively steer you back into lane when you veer over the lines. But for some reason, it doesn't have like A, B for traffic jams. <laughs> Bruh. And then there's the fact that even though this car looks built for long road trips, there is no radar guided cruise control. You just get like a really basic cruise control system. Like, come on. But I think by far the worst thing they've done to this car is equip it with capacitive touch controls on the steering wheel. <sighs> Now, I thought it was okay when I spent, you know, that hot minute with the new Golfs, but you know, living with this shit, it's terrible. There's just not enough tactility or definition in the controls to work when you want to use them without looking at them. The volume controls have no separation between them for volume up or volume down. And yes, you can slide on them, but you can't slide and hold to continuously increase the volume. Like really, what's the benefit of going touch here? I review smartphones for a living and even I can't stand these f***ing touch controls on the wheel. And if we're on the topic of things that I don't like about the cabin, I have to talk about this silver strip on the dashboard. When I first got into this car at night, I thought, wow, this looks cool. You know, it adds like a really nice premium touch and you know, all that nonsense. But then when I drove it during the day, I realized now that having a shiny reflective piece on the dashboard was a terrible idea because it seems to reflect all of the sun's blinding light directly into your eyeballs. Though I have to say that I think the biggest adjustment I had to make when I was you know, trying to live with this car is just getting used to how long this car is. From end to end, this car is over 4,860 millimeters long. To put that into perspective, this car is 160 millimeters longer than the seven-seater Tiguan Allspace R-Line. 
And that's a bit of a problem because in combination with how low this car is, suddenly it's like all the parking lots feel too short and my ass is always sticking out a little bit. VW does try to make things like parking and going up tight ramps easier by including a 360 degree camera and this really cool flip out reverse camera. But it's kind of low res. I was driving the new Toyota Corolla Cross recently and that 360 degree camera is way nicer to use than this one. And that car costs half as much. As a result, I just ended up using my mirrors like a low tech person. Ugh. Now, at the end of the day, are any of these issues deal breakers for the Arteon R line? No, I don't think so. This is a good car. It's a great car, especially for the money. I guess the only question is, has Volkswagen done enough for the Arteon that it can compete with the heritage and the prestige of something like a BMW 3 Series or you know a Mercedes C-Class? And unfortunately, I, I don't think that they have. And I think a big part of that is because of this batch right here. It's just not a three-pointed star and it's not an ultimate driving machine. It's just a people's car. But that, I don't think, is any fault of the Arteon. You see, Mercedes and BMW have spent time and money and effort to associate their brands with luxury or performance. You know, they're not just making cars and selling them. They're selling their customers on a lifestyle, the idea of success. And unfortunately for VW, they just haven't done that yet. But here's my counterpoint to that. After spending a week living with this car, a part of me is starting to feel like this is actually the thinking man's luxury sedan. Think about it, it's more powerful than the competition. It's more spacious, it's more comfortable. And I think it also looks way better. And plus, that grip from that four motion system, <sighs> But, you know, I'm not here to tell you how to spend your 250,000 ringgit. It's a lot of money, and you're free to spend it however you want and live with all the consequences. What I will say, though, is that if you have that kind of money to buy a car, I think you'd be a fool to not at least get into one of these and give it a go. 